Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof. Omar. So today we're going to talk about linear congruence equations, and pretty much they're about the following question. If you have integers a, b, and c, when does this equation right here, ax congruent to b mod c, have a solution for x? And when we find the solution, if we can find one, how do we find all possible solutions? So this is going to be really important for RSA encryption. And this video is in a series of videos working up to that. Um, so let's play around with some examples to get a sense of what solutions might look like um, to be able to come up with a theorem maybe of what a solution set would look like in general. So let's start with this equation right over here, or congruence equation. 3x is congruent to 1 mod 9. So recalling what this means, this means that 9 would have to divide 3x minus 1. So our question is, is there a value of x for which 9 divides 3x minus 1? Or in other words, 3x minus 1 is a multiple of 9. Okay, well if 9 divided this quantity, then that would mean 3 divides this quantity. But there's a little bit of a problem with that for a couple of reasons. First of all, this number here is 1 less than a multiple of 3. But multiples of 3 happen every 3 integers, so there's no way this can happen. Another thing is, um, another way to see that this is a problem is, well, if 3 divided this quantity, we know that 3 divides 3x, then 3 would divide their difference, which would mean 3 divides 1. And 3 doesn't divide 1, so this is a problem. So it is the case that this one has no solution. Okay, let's look at another example to get some insight. 18x is congruent to 8 mod 12. Now we could go about doing the same thing that we did before, but another thing we could do is reword this question thinking about what we thought about before. So this is asking whether or not 12 divides 18x minus 8 for some x. All right. So another way to word that is saying that 18x minus 8 is a multiple of 12. So um, we could say, does there exist a y such that 18x minus 8 is 12y? Huh, so this looks like almost like a linear Diophantine equation. We can rearrange things around to say this is trying to find values of x and y for which 18x plus 12 times negative y is 8. And in our video on linear Diophantine equations, we had a way to determine whether or not such a thing had a solution, and if it does, what the full solution set is. We have to check that the GCD of these two things is a factor of this. The GCD of 8 and 18 and 12 is 6, 6 doesn't divide 8, so this has no solution. So we're getting a sense that really these linear congruence equations look like linear Diophantine equations in disguise. So in that light, let's actually try to solve one of these, if possible, and we'll do this more complicated example. Is there a value of x for which 35x is congruent to 95 mod 330? All right. So using the same idea as we did here, we can approach this by asking whether or not we can find a value of y for which 35x plus 330 times negative y is 95. Okay, so we can use the Euclidean algorithm to figure out what the GCD of these two is. What I'm going to do instead is actually divide this by 5. So we notice that all of these factors here um, have a 5 as a factor. So I'll divide by 5. We got 7x plus 66 times negative y is 19. So we can find a solution to this by using the Euclidean algorithm and um, Bezu's lemma. So we'll take these two numbers and run the Euclidean algorithm. So 66 is 9 times 7, which is 63 plus 3. So here's our quotient, our remainder. And 7 is 2 times 3 plus 1. So we've ended our process. The GCD of 67 and 66 and 7 is 1. 
And now doing this in reverse, one is seven plus three times negative two, which you can write as seven plus negative two times uh, 66 minus nine times seven. And now we have one as an integer combination of 66 and seven. We get uh, 19 copies of seven and negative two copies of 66. Okay, so then 19 is seven times 19 times 19, which is 361, plus 66 times 19, which is negative 18. So here we have two values for x and y that actually work in our equation right over here, which then mean they work in this equation right over here. And so a value of x that works for our congruence is 361. Moreover, we actually know a complete set of solutions to this thing. It's the set of values x, y that start off with the values that we had, 361 and negative 18, and add in 66 and negative 7 as our, our values here. So these are solutions for uh, negative y x and negative y. So our complete solution set for x is numbers that look like 361 plus 66t, where t is an integer. Okay, so another way to word these is they're the numbers x that are congruent to 361 mod 66. And so we get a complete solution set here and we see that the solution set is not modulo 330, it's actually modulo a factor of it. And the reason has to do with the fact that 35 and 330 have this common factor of five that we're able to reduce out in this linear congruence equation right here. But this does give us a complete solution set for what values of x actually work. And we can reduce 361 appropriately to be smaller so that it actually lies in the range between zero and 65 because that's what we're typically used to doing. Okay, this is cool. So we get a theorem from this called the linear congruence theorem that says if you have an integer m, and I'll use what we have here as motivation in this last example, if we have an integer m, at least one, the linear congruence equation, this has a solution if and only if some condition is satisfied, and the condition, let's think about this, this can be worded as, like we did in the previous example, finding values of x and y for which ax plus m times negative y is b. And from our work on linear Fantini equations, we have a solution for this if and only if the GCD of a and m divides b. And once we have one particular solution, in this previous example, a particular solution was 361. Then we can actually write down all the solutions, again, by thinking about what happens with the linear Fantini equation. So in the linear Fantini equation, the solution set, again, will look like whatever solution set we start off with, so say x naught and y naught, plus, constant multiples of m over d, negative a over d, where d was the GCD of these two factors a and m. So in particular, x is going to be this particular x naught plus constant multiples of this factor m over d. And so, we can write this as x equals the set of things x naught plus t times m over d, where t is an integer, which we can also write more compactly as 
the things that are congruent to this x naught that we found, but modulo m over d. Okay, and we had that situation right over here. Um, our m was 330, our d was 5, that was the common factor between 35 and 330, and our solution set was modulo 330 divided by 5. Okay, so we're not giving a proof of this here because the proof mimics the process that we saw with linear d fancy equations. Okay, cool. So let's look at another type of congruence equation and see if we can find a solution to that. And that is to find all integers x that satisfy both these two recurrence or these two recurrence equations right over here. So what we'll do is think about this by starting with this expression here. The numbers that satisfy the congruence equation x is congruent to 9 mod 33 are numbers that look like a multiple of 33 plus 9. So we can substitute that in for this congruence equation on the right and say that we're trying to figure out values of t and then subsequently what values of x are that satisfy uh, 33t plus 9 is congruent to 13 modulo 20. All right, subtracting from both sides, this is equivalent to finding values of t for which 33t is congruent to 4 mod 20. And hey, we're in a perfect situation where we've now sort of reduced this to a linear congruence equation. By what we talked about above, this thing, because in our case here, a and m have a GCD of one, this thing will have a solution for t modulo 20, and then we can substitute that back in for x to determine what x has to look like. All right, so let's go ahead and actually solve this. Um, so we'll use the Euclidean algorithm with 33 and 20. 33 is 1 times 20 plus 13. And then 20 is 1 times 13 plus 7. And 13 is 7 plus 6. And 7 is 6 plus 1. Okay, so going backwards, we have 1 is 7 minus 6 which is 7 minus 13 minus 7. So we get negative 1 times 13 plus twice 7, uh, which is negative 1 times 13 plus 20 minus 13. And so we get a copy of 20. Uh, there's a 2 here. So we get two copies of 20 plus negative 3 copies of 13. And then finally, the negative 3 being 33 minus 20, um, giving us a total of 5 copies of 20 and negative 3 copies of 33. Okay, so that's what 1 is. All right, so if you want to figure out a solution to this thing, to figure out one particular solution, we can multiply this entire equation here by 4. We get 4 is 20 times 20 plus negative 12 times the 33. Right, so the D of Antian equation 20x plus 33y equals 4 has a particular solution, and that solution is this solution right over here, or sorry, this solution right over here. Okay, so in our congruence, then, the value of t that will work is whatever value of y works here, which is negative 12. So negative 12 works. And because the GCD of 33 and 20 is 1, by our previous theorem, the linear congruence theorem, it tells us that the entire solution set for t is things that are negative 12 modulo 20.
Okay, so what does that tell us about our actual solution for x? So t then is going to look like negative 12 plus 20 times something else. Let's call it s. And the entire set of values of t that work are things that look like this where s is any possible integer. So because the things that x look like are of this form where t is any integer that satisfies this particular equation here, x is going to look like things like 33 times negative 1 ts plus 9. Okay, so if you clean that up, it's things of the form 33 times negative 12 plus 9 plus 33 times 20 s. For any value of s. So what we've concluded from this process is if you have an x that satisfies both of these, x will have to look something like this quantity here, 33t plus 9 for some value of t, but also satisfy this thing here. And as a consequence, x has to look something like this. And if you plug this actual thing in for x itself, it'll satisfy both of these congruence equations. So we do get a particular solution, and the solution itself is that x is congruent to a particular number modulo the product of 33 and 20. And the process of actually developing what that value is, is this process that we went about right over here. Now to make this explicit, this quantity here is negative 387. So this tells us a few things. If you have these two numbers and they have no common factors, then you get a complete solution set that is a set of numbers modulo their product. And the reason that works is because of the development that we just did right over here using congruences. So we get this theorem that's typically called the Chinese remainder theorem, but it's actually named after Sun Zi, and so I want to name it after the individual who discovered it. There are different um, histories about whether, or different debates in history about who actually discovered this, but um, this is one person that is typically attested to. And the theorem says if you have the GCD of M and M being one, and you're solving this congruence, system of congruence equations like we have here, where x is congruent to a mod something and b is congruent to a mod x is congruent to b mod something else, where those two things have common greatest common factor one, then this definitely has a solution. And if you have one solution, the complete solution set is all things congruent to this particular number, modulo mn. Cool. All right. So a nice blending of all of the linear Diophantine equation material that we developed to be able to construct solutions to these different types of linear congruence equations um, that'll become very handy for us when we dive in to actually studying the RSA encryption algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.